Hey, how's everyone doing? Today I'm going to be showing you how to do the Shadows of Evil Easter Eggs solo and co-op. Before we get started, to do this in solo, you will need to download the solo Easter Eggs mod from the Steam Workshop, and I will leave a link to this down in the description. This is going to be the last Easter Egg that requires you to download something for solo players, so that's a huge W right there. Completing this Easter Egg will also give you the summoning key in the menu for the Super Easter Egg. Step 1 is going to have you open up Pack-a-Punch, and this is going to be the longest step to complete, and you will need to do a lot so let's get started. Firstly you need to get the summoning key and to get the summoning key enter beast mode from one of these podiums and melee this box and spawn on the back of this truck. When you exit beast mode go ahead and pick it up. Now each of the four characters have a ritual they need to complete for a gate worm. In solo you can do all four of the rituals and hold all of the gate worms but in co-op each player needs to pick up a gate worm. We're gonna start with Nero since you can do his right outside of spawn. Enter beast mode and shock this panel outside of the spawn door this will drop a pen that you'll need for later, but for now, while you're still in beast mode, grapple to Nero's apartment next to spawn and run through to the other side and shock this panel to unlock the stairs. Go ahead and exit beast mode, and now you need to go pick up that pen. A couple keepers will spawn, just kill them and enter Nero's apartment using those stairs you shocked, and place down the summoning key and the pen on this table. This will start a ritual. You cannot leave this room, a bunch of keepers will spawn, and this is not kill based, but it is time based. So you can do whatever you want while locked in here. When it's over, the gateworm will spawn and you can pick it up off the table. The next ritual is Jackie Vincent's. For this, enter beast mode again and go into the canals. Shock this panel in the far corner, then run over here to melee this box. This will drop the police badge that you can grab later. Now grapple onto the ruby rabbit, run down the stairs and shock this panel to unlock the stairs. When you exit beast mode, go to the box you meleeed earlier and pick up the police badge. Go to the upstairs the ruby rabbit and start the ritual. When it's over, pick up the second gate worm. For every two rituals you do, a Margwell will spawn, so on the second and fourth ritual completion. The next ritual is going to be Jessica Roses. Enter beast mode again and head over to the footlight district and grapple onto this building. Just in front of the perk machine is going to be a little ramp. You need to run and jump off this ramp to this ledge like you're on X Games mode and melee this box. This will drop a hairpiece that you will grab later. Now run over into the street and grapple onto the burlesque and shock this panel to open the door. Just do the same things as before and pick up the hairpiece. Place the hairpiece and the summoning key on the table and wait for the ritual to finish and then pick up the gateworm. The final ritual is Floyd Campbell's and for this one head over to the waterfront district and enter beast mode. Grapple onto this building and melee the box to get the championship belt. Head all the way down to the docks area and melee this door to get the box boxing ring open. When you exit beast mode, pick up the belt and start the ritual in the boxing ring. When it's over, pick up the final gateworm. In each of the four main areas of the map, we need to have these three doors open that lead to rifts. To open these, you just need to melee them inside of beast mode. There's one in the canals next to where you picked up the police badge, one in the footlight district in this alleyway, and one in the waterfront district in this alleyway. When you exit beast mode, go inside any one of the doors you opened and open the rift. Go inside and you'll be greeted with a bunch of keepers. Just kill them and go to the back of the subway station. There should be five glowing symbols. When you get close enough, the wall is going to disappear and you can go inside to put all your gateworms in the four podiums inside the Pack-a-Punch room. After you put all four in, place the summoning key on the table towards the entrance and this will start the final ritual. Same thing as before, just survive until it ends, but this time Pack-a-Punch will be open and the Shadow Man will steal the summoning key. After all that, you can finally move on to step two. For step two, we're going to be obtaining and upgrading the sword. In co-op, every single player needs to do this. And to get the sword, we need to look for three different symbols around the map that can only be seen while we are riding the tram. Now there's going to be a lot of different ways you can do this. If you look at this map, map at each and any one of the tram stations, it tells you where to look for the symbols. The easiest way for me to do this is if I take the tram from waterfront to footlight and look to my right the whole time. That will give me two of the symbols, and for the third symbol, I need to take the tram from footlight to the canals and also look to my right the whole time. When you have all three symbols, save them or write them down somewhere, and we can do another step to getting the sword before we input them. In the three main districts and in the subway 
railway station, there's going to be these four big crates that you can break in beast mode that will reveal statues, and you need these to make the sword. The first one is right here in the subway. Next is to the right of the ruby rabbit. Next is in the footlight district under the bridge. And finally, the last one is in waterfront inside this building. To get to this one, just shock the stairs in beast mode. Once you've broke all of them, head down to the subway station to input those symbols from earlier. To do this, you need to be in beast mode again and come over to this wall opposite the statue and shock the symbols that you wrote down. The wall will open and you can pick up an egg. Before you exit beast mode though, if you come up the stairs and shock this box, you will open a door that allows you to come down there without using a rift portal just something to keep in mind for later. When you exit beast mode, pick up the egg and place it inside the statue in front of you. For each of the statues you need to place the egg at, you will need to get kills and collect souls near the egg until the egg starts to glow slightly. Then pick it up and move on to the next statue until the egg is completely glowing. After it's fully glowing, take the egg back to where you picked it up and place it back down to grab the sword. We now need to upgrade the sword and this is going to be a little more difficult. Depending on the character you're playing as, you will need to go to that character's specific building. So if you're Nero, then his apartment, Floyd, go to the boxing gym, Jackie, go to the Ruby Rabbit, or Jessica, go to the burlesque. There should be a keeper above the ritual table and you can pick up an egg from him. And for this egg, you need to go to four different circles on the floor and place down the egg. Again, every player needs to do this in co-op. There is one outside of the Ruby Rabbit, one outside of Spawn, one outside the burlesque, and the last one is outside the boxing gym. When you place down an egg, a Margo will spawn and you just need to kill it. The catch to this is you can only do it once per round and each time you place down the egg the amount of margwas that spawns increases by one. This will take you at least four rounds to complete with each completion making a portion of the egg glow in your stat screen and once you've done it Take the egg all the way back to the keeper you got it from and give him your sword. Immediately after, you can pick up the upgraded sword from his hands. Step 3 is going to have you protect a flag for a total of 8 times. Before you can do this though, go up to Nero's apartment and hold down the action button on this book. It should float into the air and the flag will spawn down inside the subway system. You can just go ahead and pick it up. I recommend using the fear and headlights gobble gum for this step too, but when you pick it up, all the zombies will despawn and meatballs will start dropping out of the sky. You'll need to head above ground and in random places on the map that are extremely easy to see, there will be a bunch of light wisps on the floor that you will need to place the flag at. When you do this, the meatballs will try to attack the flag and try to break it. You can't let that happen because you'll need to go another round and start over with that specific flag. This is why it's great to have fear and headlights because when you have it on, all the enemies that you're looking at will freeze in place until that gobblegum's duration is over. But as soon as you look away then they'll start moving again so you kind of just need to keep looking at them and make sure that they're not gonna hit the flag. For this the shadow man will also try to break it so you need to keep shooting him when you see him. If you don't shoot him in time he will spawn a bunch of flies and you'll know the flag's done when you hear a loud ding and it's glowing purplish red around the top. Just pick it up and place it at another light wisp. Do the same thing to protect it, but this time when it's done, you need to bring it to one of the four ritual rooms and place it in front of the keeper. Now you need to do this three more times, so go around, grab the flag, protect it twice in two different locations, and keep in mind too that when you're defending the flag at the wisp, when you complete it successfully, you need to defend another flag, so you need to do this for a total of two different times in each completion, if that makes sense. Then finally place the flag by a different keeper. So in total, you'll need to do this four times in four different rounds. Step four is gonna be the mini boss fight with the shadow man. For this, I recommend using a death machine from Raindrops or Fatal Contraption. Go down to the Pack-A-Punch room and in solo interact with one of the keepers. In co-op, everyone needs to interact with the keepers. Once you've interacted with the keepers, now is the time to get your death machine and stand at the ritual table. Shoot the shadow man as fast as you can with the death machine to get him to move over to the table you're standing at. And when he's directly above the table, put away your death machine and hold down the action button. If you don't put away the death machine, 
holding down the action button won't work. He should get sucked into the summoning key and then you can move on to the final step. The final step is different in solo and co-op. In solo, you need to start the tram off at the canals as this is the easiest way to do this step and you'll understand why in a minute. On the floor around the map, there are going to be several purple symbols. Do not step in these symbols because they will kill you. There are also going to be these little white orbs around the map that you need to run into every so often. Otherwise, you'll die from suffocation. When your screen starts to turn purple, that's when you know to find an orb and run into it. For this step, beast mode is going to be locked until you kill a purple-headed margwa and then you'll receive an activation. There will be a ton of Margwas, so be careful. Just keep all of this in mind as you do this next step. To actually do this step, you need to enter beast mode. This time, it's gonna be permanent, so you'll have plenty of time, and head to each of the tram stations in canals, footlight, and waterfront. You should see these electrical boxes at the top, and you'll need to shock all three of them. The track should be turned blue when you do. Exit beast mode and kill another Margwa. Now go back over to the canals and activate the train, but do not stay inside, you'll have to be quick. So activate it, run out and go back into beast mode, then run into the junction and shock all three of these keepers. A laser should shoot into the Apothecon and the cutscene will play. In co-op, the only difference is each player is going to have to shock a different electrical box right before the tram is being called. So that fourth player will have to shock the keepers. The only thing I suggest to make this easier because the electrical boxes are on a shorter timer is that right before the tram is called, everyone just continuously shocks their box as the fourth calls the tram and runs to shock the keepers. When you do this, the cutscene should start to play. Congratulations on completing the Shadows of Evil Easter Egg. For this one, in solo or co-op, there is no achievement, but if you struggle with any of the steps, let me know down in the comments, especially for the last step. I want to thank all of you for watching, and for my next video, I will show you how to complete the giant Easter Egg. Have a great rest of your day, and bye.